Hello, everyone, and welcome to the program. I'm Sean Okimaloye in Lagos. Well, it is no doubt the political atmosphere in Nigeria is generating more heat than envisaged. The polity is charged. But let's remind you just how close we are to the elections. Take a look at the countdown clock right there. It is 19 days to the opening of the fourth day of ballot. Yes. And for those of you who are voting age who haven't yet collected the, your permanent voter card, you have until February the 8th to do so. Just to remind you. Well, over the, la the last days, or the past few days, the major national conversation is a decision of President Muhammad Buhari to suspend the head of the Nigerian judiciary, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogan. And uh, he swore in Justice Ibrahim Tanku Muhammad as the acting Chief Justice of Nigeria. The president gave his reasons, the reasons for his actions. Take a listen to it. This government is dissatisfied with the alarm rate in which the Supreme Court of Nigeria, under the oversight of Justice Walter, has serially set free persons accused of the most dire acts of corruption, often on mere technicalities, and after quite a number of them have been convicted by the trial and applicate courts. What have been loud reactions from different quarters to the Friday decision by the press, you, the European Union Election Monitoring Group reacted. United States and the United Kingdom office in Nigeria have also reacted. Their reaction showed dissatisfaction to the move made by the president. The main opposition party to the PDP too, they've reacted. But yesterday, the acting CGN, Tanko Ibrahim, swore in about 250 members of the elections petitions tribunal and he did confess about the kind of tough situation the Nigerian judiciary has found itself. Judiciary is in a trying time. You must, and I repeat, you must stand to protect and uphold the integrity of this arm of government. That's about uh, 24 hours or less, by the way, after I was sworn. So, there's been another controversy about, uh, has he planned this before, or how did he come about uh, composing the, those that will make up the Petition Tribunal Committee for the elections? There's another issue anyway. That on one hand, just hold it. There have been a series of criticisms to the decision of the president. The legality and the effect on constitutionalism, the rule of law, and Nigeria's democracy. And so tonight, we'll get some insight from an experienced Nigerian lawyer, rights activist and senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano, joins us on the program tonight. Thank you so much, Mr. Falano. Thank you very in. much. It's my pleasure. It's a tough time for the Nigerian judiciary, isn't it? I agree with you. Perhaps very the, tough very, and trying period. Perhaps the toughest you've seen in your years of uh, practice, <clears throat> is it? I think so. It's the most trying period for the judiciary of Nigeria. Does the president have the powers to suspend a sitting chief justice of Nigeria? I think before I answer your question, you just talk about the inauguration of the members of the election, election. petition tribunal. Uh, and I think I need to make that correction. The members are not selected by the chief justice. They are selected by the president of the court of appeal. Right? They are only inaugurated by the, press, by the Chief Justice of Nigeria. So, an acting president appointed on Friday couldn't have possibly assembled 250 judges across the country for inauguration on Saturday. So, it's, it's not, uh, we need to correct that. So, it's not premeditated as some people are suggesting. No, uh, no, 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 no. Are suggesting. I mean, many of them have traveled from far and near. So, they couldn't just have been asked to be in Abuja. The program was already uh, arranged. Because the speculation is also that uh, uh, Justice Onorgan will probably do that inauguration uh, on Monday or so, and uh, before the suspension came. So a lot of people are worried that the whole essence of uh, his suspension is uh, benchmarked on the role that he will be playing ahead of the election. For me, I, I, I really don't 
have refrained from engaging in speculation. I deal with the facts on ground. And I have made this point repeatedly. The Supreme Court does not get involved in election petitions until, I mean, in the case of presidential election from the Court of Appeal. There, is, there must be an appeal from the Court of Appeal. And of course, in the case of governorship election, from the Court of Appeal, after you have gone through the election petition tribunal. So, but for those who are linking this with the election, I, I don't want to go there. I mean, the, your question is whether the president has the power to suspend the chief justice of Nigeria with profound respect. I've only regards to section 292 of the Constitution, as well as the powers of the NGC, clearly spelled out in the schedule, schedule to the Constitution. The power to suspend a sitting judge in Nigeria, including the Chief Justice, has to be on the recommendation of the National Judicial Council. But in this case, the President was reported to have acted on an ex parte order of the Code of Conduct Tribunal. I publicly decried the procedure. And for me, the procedure for dealing with a criminal case is as important as the trial itself. If you get it wrong, too bad. And a government can never be in a hurry. A government can never, can never be allowed to engage in jungle justice or self-help. Unfortunately, this time around, both sides, both the judicial arm of government and the executive arm of government have disappointed Nigerians. In what way? Ours is the only country in the world. And I have challenged my colleagues to tell me any modern state, apart from banana republics, where you go to courts, to forum shop for court order. No. Once your client is invited by the police or any law enforcement agency, what we are taught in the law school, what students are taught in the law school, is that you can accompany your client to the police station. As for the bail of your client, if bail is refused, go to the court. Go to the high court to ask for bail. But you cannot, on the invitation of your client by law enforcement agency, go to court to say, thou shall not invite my client. Thou shall not investigate my client. Thou shall not try my client. It's not part of our law. So those ex parte injunctions and those orders are wrong? Under our law. Because by virtue of section 306 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, once a trial commences, there shall be no stay of proceedings, no suspension. Expressly. All English. your, and that, and I think that was what the lawyers to the chief justice did by filing an objection in that tribunal. In that tribunal. There's no way any court anywhere can stop the prosecution before the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Because my Lord, the Honorable Justice Onoga, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, had said in the case of Saraki and the Federal Republic of Nigeria that the Code of Conduct Tribunal is the only, only court, only forum exclusively empowered to deal with breaches of Code of Conduct for public officers. So you can't go to a national industrial court or a customary court of appeal or a federal high court which has no jurisdiction on allegations of breaches of the code of conduct. So, uh, uh, no. It's an advocate. So you are saying, because uh, uh, the defendants in the case, uh, the lawyers to the CJN had gone to the national industrial court, they've gone to the federal no, court of appeal. No, you Those see, are wrong. No, so what I'm saying, those who went to those courts are lawyers who I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure now whether they are part of the legal team. But
if your job is at stake in channels, I cannot, as family father, no, go to court for you because I'm not a grift. You are the one that grift. So those orders cannot stand. But what the government ought to have done was to have gone to those courts to challenge the order. The most embarrassing one, right, is the one from the National Industrial Court. That court is a labor court, a court established to deal with disputes arising from the termination or dismissal of workers or intra-union or inter-union disputes. It has nothing to do with the Chief Justice of Nigeria who has been appointed under the Constitution. So when you go to the National Industrial Court, you are given the dangerous impression that the Chief Justice is an employee of the President. Therefore, don't allow his boss to remove him. That is, for me, rather bonkun. So we must learn to operate under the rule of law. So you now play into the hands of a regime that was determined to embarrass the country as it were by putting the chief justice on suspension. That's what has happened. The premise on which the president uh, is acting, the, the court order that the president, uh, the, the, uh, the federal government uh, got the, the court order to suspend, the, the court order is actually saying that the, the defendant shall step aside and he's also asking the president to also take necessary measures to swear in the most senior. So, uh, see, what premise would you, you, see, would you, you count see, these uh, court orders? Let me be honest with you. <clears throat> no court, no court, not even the Supreme Court, can order somebody occupying an office. I'm not talking of the Chief Justice now. Anybody occupying an office. To vacate, ex parte, because you have already determined his rights and obligations in his absence. As the late Abiola, MK Abiola will say, you can't shave my head in my absence. You can ask for an injunction to say somebody should not assume office because somebody else is occupying the office. But you cannot, on an ex parte basis, remove somebody from office. And then ask somebody to take his place. So CCT saying that the CGN should step aside is wrong. No, it's not possible. I mean, <laughs> and that's why I have advised the lawyers to the chief justice have to approach either the Code of Conduct Tribunal or the Court of Appeal to challenge the legality of such an order. And if you look at the order, as I've described it, it's, for me, it's like a suspect document. I mean, the, the, according to that order, mm. the lawyer that moved the motion is not stated. The date, according to the order, the motion expected was filed on the 9th. We arrived, the charge itself was filed on the 11th. What do you make of the fact that the following day after the Court of Appeal also uh, had an order uh, over this matter? No, again, as I said, with profound respect to the Court of Appeal. Again, the Court of Appeal cannot cannot make an order restraining the Code of Conduct Tribunal. So there's been wrong from, Just a minute. From performing what belongs to it exclusively, a duty conferred on it exclusively by the Constitution. Because in the case of Olisametu and Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Supreme Court of Nigeria, led by the Honorable Justice what I will not get, the Supreme Court of Nigeria oppressed Section 306 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 to the fact that no court in Nigeria has the power to stay proceedings in any criminal court. And in the case of Saraki and Federal Republic of Nigeria, justice or not get, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, this say that the Administration of the Criminal Justice Act is applicable in the Code of Conduct Tribunal. So, uh, uh, Senior Advocate, from the process of which uh, this trial was emanated, uh, from where uh, the CCB took this petition to the CCT, a lot of people have faulted the process 
and a petition and all of that. So there's been a wrong in all of this process no, all no, along. No, 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 no. You see, let us be very careful. If, if I receive a petition on the 9th and the Chief Justice was confronted on the 10th and he made the statement, I'm sorry I made an error. I forgot to fill my, to declare my asset. What else do you want to do? Of course, I mean, the president talks of the alacrity with which court orders were being procured. Of course, the filing of a charge within 48 hours can also be said to have been done with alacrity. But you see, I am saying, well, I mean, my colleagues, frankly speaking, played into the hands of the executive. I had, like many other lawyers, insisted that the National Judicial Council be allowed to be seized of this matter, conduct an inquiry, and make appropriate recommendations to the authorities. Unfortunately, the National Judicial Council was to have had this 88th statutory meeting on the 15th of January. Members from outside Abuja had arrived the city when they suddenly received a terse SMS to the fact that the meeting has been postponed indefinitely with regret on the directive of the, of the chief judge. So again, you made it impossible for the NGC to take control of this matter. Perhaps if the NGC had met last week and taken a decision, who wouldn't be in this mess? Mr. Falano, um, the Speaker of the House of Representatives says that we are drifting into uh, a case of, uh, uh, okay, the, the, the standing president said this is a coup on Nigerian democracy. And that uh, uh, the speaker was talking about the fact that Nigeria and this decision is a, uh, is a dictatorial that we are drifting into. You know, you know, you know I, don't, I don't want to go to, with profound respect. Are those words uh, right description to what we are facing right now? With profound respect, I don't want to comment on the views being expressed by certain individuals in the country. I had warned that Nigerians have to be prepared to defend this rickety democratic process. I've, 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 I've warned against our dissent to fascism. And I'm not talking of the APC alone. The current Senate president, Dr. Bukola Saraki, sacked a chief judge, a chief judge in Kwarasi, Justice Elelu Abib, in 2009, by merely sending a letter, sending a letter to the House. I have, I, I'm removing the chief judge of my of the state. Of course, the case went from the federal High Court to the Supreme Court. And in 2012, the Supreme Court decided, the seven justices unanimously heard that by virtue of Section 292 of the Constitution, the head of any of the courts in Nigeria, I'm talking of the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, Federal High Court, High Court, Customary Court of Appeal, Sharia Court of, and the rest of them, cannot be removed without a prior investigation conducted by the National Judicial Council. And that case is applicable to justice on August 5th. So without going through the NJC, it is difficult to suspend the Chief Justice of Nigeria or any head of, the, any head of court for that man. So those who those whose tape is being replayed should not insult the intelligence of Nigeria. Please. If you look at some of the issues that have been raised, um, again, it will, it will bring us to the fact that where do we go from here? The, the implications of all of these for the judiciary, for our election that is just uh, around the corner. The question here is that the president and, uh, well, 
which who is also uh, has given his uh, decision on this. So a lot of people are advising the president to withdraw that decision of suspending uh, just his uh, water on August. What's your take on that? I, I would want to say, first of all, that there is nothing strange in challenging the integrity of judges. This is a global phenomenon. Last year, August, the Deputy Chief Justice of uh, Kenya, Justice Mupura, was arrested in our office in the Supreme Court of that country. Three years ago, a journalist, a journalist, because the judiciary of Ghana refused to move against judges who were elected to be corrupt, a journalist, Anas, went secretly to record judges who were negotiating bribes and taking bribes and was able to put 34 of them on tape, 12 fire court judges and 22 magistrates. They were all flushed out. In fact, the day he was going to show the film in Accra, the tickets sold out. It showed the film at the National Theatre. And, and so what happens all over the world is that because of the position occupied by judges, they are required to live above board like scissors. So in our case, Nigeria cannot be different. But please, don't give the impression that what is happening here is so strange. Isn't it? That it's an anathema that we cannot question judges. Even one of my colleagues said, oh, the chief justice enjoys immunity. I said, where? Because by version of Section 308, those who enjoy immunity are stated there. But at the same time, even if you catch a thief, an armed robbery suspect, red-handed, you must still take him to the police so that he can be tried. If you shout thief, thief, and the suspect is extrajudicially executed or killed, nobody will talk of armed robbery. We are going to arrest all those who participate in the brutal murder, they're going to be charged with you know, murder. Therefore, the government must learn to respect due process. You can't fight corruption without following due process. Therefore, I'm going to advise, honestly speaking, that the government should, as a matter of urgency, lift the suspension on the chief justice and say the chief justice as so much on his own admitted that he did not declare his assets. He should do the needful by calling it quits. You mean Justice Onogen should, oh, yes. should quit the bench? should be prepared to quit the bench after the suspension has been lifted. He should be advised. If he's not found guilty because by any No, court? no, no, no. Yes. Because once you have admitted that I fail in my duty to declare my asset as required by the Constitution, right? You must learn to be civilized. I mean, you know, when people, oh, you know, Nigeria will resign, people distort our history. There was the late Dr. Taishilari, he was the chairman of the Federal Public Complaints, the Public Complaints Commission. He was driving in Ibadan. As soon as he was accosted by the police, his license, driving license was demanded because he did not have the license on him. He pleaded with the police, I left it at home. I have one. But as soon as he returned to his office, he tendered, he wrote a letter of resignation. And when the late uh, General Muitala Mohammed, who was the head of state, military head of state at the material time, called him, sir, why? You haven't committed an offense since you have 24 hours to produce the license. Say no. What I've done is a bad example. And so I have no choice but to quit. So we must learn to quit offices when we have made Mistakes, colossal mistakes, right. as in this case. Right. 
So, um, uh, let, let me for a moment switch to our Abuja speaker, Mr. Afalano, just a moment. Uh, let me go to uh, the president's uh, special assistant on media, Mr. Garbasho, who joins us now, because there's been a lot of widespread uh, criticism and reactions on the decision of the president to suspend the CJN. And uh, we would like to know what the president's reaction is on the response, for example, from the United States Embassy, uh, which is uh, saying that the uh, the decision is unconstitutional and that it undermines the independence of the judicial branch. He's saying that uh, he's noting the widespread uh, criticism from Nigeria and that it undercuts the stated determination of government candidates and political party leaders to ensure that the elections proceed in a way that is free and fair and transparent and peaceful leading to a credible post. And they did say such action is needed urgently now to ensure that this decision does not cast a pall over the electoral process. Mr. Shaw, what is the reaction of the presidency to the several reactions uh, from the international community? Well, uh, let me first of all say that, uh, you know, in the relationships between nations, these are governed by certain norms, conventions. Among these is also the, is the fact that you don't meddle in the internal affairs of one another. And I think this is why since the new American president came into office about two years ago, there has been so much quarrel between them and Russia because one country is accusing the other of meddling in their own elections. In, in our statement, we did say we are interested in being assisted to improve our elections and to grow our democracy. However, where these attempts aimed at dividing our people or sowing seeds of discontent or trouble, no, this government will not accept. In this particular instance, most of the argument put against us by those foreign countries says that this is the wrong time. Three weeks to elections, you don't do a thing like this. And I think that uh, if they were fair to us, they should know that in our own laws, a policeman can make arrest on Christmas Day. He can make arrest on Saturday Day or on Sunday. It, there is no holy day on which they cannot, you cannot apprehend you know, criminals. So our laws should be allowed to work. And the president acted upon a directive by a code of law recognized by our own constitution and so therefore our president has done no wrong. Does President Buhari see this as meddling in our internal affairs by these international uh, officials? They, they will... Well... They, they, they will not have accepted this in their own countries. And, 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 and uh, some groups, the, the Murik, for instance, the Muslim rights concern, gave a very intelligent statement on this matter, saying, if, for instance, the Lord Chief Justice of the UK were to be found to have money in access of their own incomes deposited in bank accounts, or the chief judge of the United States Supreme Court found to have lived abroad above means or had stashed huge sums of money that cannot be accounted for, they would not have accepted it. In our own case, whether someone was imperiled by a sense of guilt or whatever it was, there was a written admission that I am mistaken or that I forgot to do this duty prescribed by the Constitution. So, as a matter of, it's a settled matter. I'm not even sure investigation is warranted in the circumstance, because there is an admission. And, and the thing then would have been, if anybody cared about the institutions, if you are concerned that you embody the integrity and the well-being of the country's jurisprudence, I would have thought that uh, as a 
Fala and I stayed a short while ago. Someone should have resigned and allowed the country, you know, to enjoy her peace and relieve the judiciary of this unnecessary and, and, and enormously, you know, problematic burden. Mr. Uh, Shehu, uh, this government, your government, has been criticized of not following due process by the opposition and some other uh, interested bodies in the country, especially when this case emerged and it all started. And now there are political, there are ethnic uh, connotations brought into, into this. Is President willing to uh, reconsider his decision over Justice Water on Organ? I, I am not sure there is any sense around the villa that somebody will go back on this one. It is not warranted. So what are you asking government to do? To ask Justice Onangian to go back to the Supreme Court tomorrow and jail somebody for not declaring the assets? Is that how to run a country's judiciary? I'm not sure that should be expected. But as it stands right now, um, the, 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 the legal bodies are saying they're going to react in some ways. The NGC is having an emergency meeting tomorrow. The Nigerian Bar Association is having an emergency meeting tomorrow. There's been a lot of groups who are coming together who are, are protesting the decision of the president. Is the president weary of what may be a backlash from what has been perceived as a political intimidation from the government against the opposition perceived? It is wrong to see this as a political intimidation of anyone. The president needs not to intimidate anyone because in any case, he has no case before, before any, any, any judge. And so therefore, the accusation is absolutely unnecessary and unfounded. As it stands right now, Mr. Shehu, if you look at a whole lot of issues that have been raised, uh, from the issue raised by uh, this Serap, Serap is giving NJC five-day ultimatum, and is also asking uh, the federal government to make a decision to retract what he has done on the case of Justice on Organ. With all of this, and there are also, <laughs> Mr. Falano here has uh, also said that the decision of the CCT on that court order is faulted. There have been flawed process all along in all of these. Those are the criticism coming from legal minds. On this situation, uh, is there going to be some kind of consideration made by the president? Or are you saying that it, this will never happen? I, I, you know, the sense uh, we have is that uh, I'm not sure I have read anyone saying that a chief justice or any judge for that matter, or any public officer, covered by the Constitution, is entitled to not declare their assets over and over again, as in this case. And to be found, because as it is now, don't forget that the case against the Chief Justice is on the non-declaration of assets. Investigation is still ongoing as to how those assets themselves were acquired. That's a different thing altogether. So no, apparently Nigerians are just concerned that President, Babang, President Muhammad Buhari is not doing this in a very nice way. But are we concerned about niceties or doing the right things? And so therefore, it is absolutely unacceptable under our own laws. And take it from me, President Muhammad Buhari will not run away from this case. But, but, but are you no, worried? Is this government, sorry if I'm a button, is this government worried about some appellation given to it when it comes to rule of law? There's some criticism that the, uh, we are drifting, drifting into a dictatorial era and uh, that we, uh, this is a coup on Nigeria's democracy. Former President Obasanjo did say that <laughs> this government with this uh, attempt or uh, approach to rule of law can be compared to the dictatorial period of Sonia Abacha. Is this government worried about those things? Let me say that uh, those people who are saying that we are drifting into dictatorship, they have fallen into amnesia. They have forgotten what actually is dictatorship is. Look, let me tell you, in the last 24, 48 hours, if you have read newspaper editorials, some of them calling for uprising against the government of Nigeria, some of them saying, we must see the end of President Muhammad Buhari. And nothing has happened to them. Is that, is, that, is that to tell you that a dictatorship is looming? A dictatorship would have clamped down on people 
So therefore, that's absolutely incorrect. And I think that the excesses are there for everyone to see. And, and, and uh, certainly, it's, certainly, it's out of place for anybody to think, accuse President Muhammad Buhari of dictatorship. Those tendencies are not there. Okay. In this particular instance, there is a validly given court order. People are questioning the integrity of that order. I have no competence to say yes or no on that. But the president of Nigeria cannot lie on this matter. We have a validly given court order saying, ask this gentleman to go on suspicion, swear in the most senior person. And this he has done, and this is the law of this country. Let me ask Mr. Falano, your reaction to what the international communities are saying about, are you worried about the comments made by the US, the UK, and the European Union Election Monitoring Group. I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, not worried over their statement. I'm not worried. Uh, but right now, these same countries are about invading Venezuela, contrary to all norms of international law. So I, I'm, not, I'm not going to celebrate the hypocrisy of Western countries. As far as I'm concerned, as far as the constitution of Nigeria is concerned, uh, what has been done has to be reviewed. In the case of the U.S., last year, four justices, four members of the Wisconsin Supreme Court were indicted by a jury on a level count of bordering on corruption, uh, tax evasion, and the rest of it. And the four of them had to be impeached. So, like I said, it's a global phenomenon. So let no none of these countries insult us. Would you, would I you, believe would, that under our constitution, I mean, well, please, United States President, Mr. Trump, describes some judges in America as the so-called judge, giving an order against my government. Don't let's go there. For us as a people, I've listened to Mr. Shil Gaba. There's no way with profound respect, and I do hope our colleagues in the government, and there are 12 lawyers in this government, three of them are senior advocates of Nigeria, will advise the government to review this matter. It cannot stand. In the interest of the country, the government will need the court. The government is prosecuting people in the court. Election petition tribunals have been set up. The APC, PDP, all of them will go there. But please, don't let's trivialize this matter by saying, oh, because they have called the president a dictator, nobody has been arrested, therefore there is no dictator. No. No. We shouldn't, we shouldn't descend to that level. When you talk of nice city, people are talking about nice city, morality is involved. I have said before, Mr. Garbashev came on board that the chief justice, the chief justice, as admitted, and like Professor Akoyebo, they said they are a couple of whispers. Forgetfulness is not a defense <laughs> under our criminal law. So please let us agree that a mistake has been made. And I'm saying on both sides, people forum shopping for others, both sides are guilty. We must be honest with ourselves. What we now should do is to review the conduct of each of the parties involved in this exercise, this embarrassing episode, so that the country can move on. Right. But when you're talking of, some people talking of coup and the rest of, wasn't there a coup in Kuala State when the chief judge was illegally removed? All right, Mr. Falano, we need to go now, but uh, just in 30 seconds, in one breath, if you can. And um, please, you can, I beg you. Yeah. I beg you. Yeah. Like I said earlier, a sitting governor was removed on the basis of an ex party order. In a number of state, Dr. Chris Ngig, who is a minister, instigated by President Obasanjo. So I, I want you to say this in one sentence so that we can, uh, yes. we can close this segment. Uh, the National Assembly is going to meet on uh, Tuesday. On Tuesday. The Senate. Senate. To what effect or implication could that be for this process? Just quickly. I expect them to, the National Assembly or the Senate, to ask for a review of this suspension in a way that we can return to constitutionalism and rule of law. And the government does not lose anything. The law is so clear on this matter that we shouldn't resort to any ambush or jungle justice. Right. We cannot do that. Mr. Femi Falano, it's always a pleasure. I, I, sometimes one would wish to have you for 
two, three, four hours on this kind of issues. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very and Mr. Kabashi, we thank you so much uh, for coming on tonight.